Hi, good morning, good afternoon. This is Amory Zanzel, and I am so excited to welcome you to our day two of the Business Building Challenge for Caregiving Professionals. So I hope you had um, a great, great night last night. And so I'm going to give you some housekeeping details. My, um, my, uh, my VA, my virtual assistant, but my colleague, Barb Rollinson, is leading my group for Lotus Group Coaching today because we do have one at Tuesday at noon. And so she is the one who is handling um, the coaching responsibilities today. So I'm going to do a little housekeeping deal details. If you would like to have your comments read, um, comments seen by us so we know who is commenting, please go to streamyard.com slash Facebook to give your, um, to let them know who is talking so we can see is talking. Um, you'll be able to catch the replay of today's broadcast here in the group and on YouTube. Um, and you can find me at Amory Zanzel. So either you can watch it in the group today or watch it on YouTube when you get a chance. And if you want to hear more about Lotus Group Coaching, you can schedule an appointment with me or Barb at that link below. So today we are going to talk about clarity. So I would love to share testimonials with you. Um, my One of my clients, JS, said, I wanted to reach out and thank you for your work and participation in my journey. Your writing, sharing, coaching, and groups with you have given me the gift of trusting myself and my journey. And I think that's really what I offer for people is I am an expert in walking alongside people so that they have somebody in their journey with them, supporting them, helping them, guiding them. And so I have done it for thousands of women in Lotus Group Coaching. And now I have done it for dozens in purposeful empowerment. It is something that I am passionate about is how to help people to get to the next stage of their life. So this is talking about clarity today. Um, this trained training is a foundation of a strategy that has enabled caregiving professionals like me and possibly like you to use their personal and professional experiences to build support and services for the communities they love. So I just want you to know we do have an implementation and accountability program we'll talk more about on day four. So what I love about um, what I'm going to teach in the next four days is that this training works in a fragile economy. It is recession proof. And this model works even in the middle of a pandemic. And I'm going to be honest with you, the pandemic is where my business took off. So our purposeful empowerment formula is actually simple yet complicated. We believe that clarity plus visibility plus branding plus valuing your worth will give you the foundation for a sustainable business to empower others. How sweet is that? And I have a secret for you. This formula is repeatable for any business you want to create. And that is amazing because that formula that I use to create Lotus Group Coaching is the exact same formula I am learning, I am using to support and build and grow purposeful empowerment. So I want to talk about some quotes um, that I really love. And um, Leadership is about others making making others better as a result of your presence and make sure that that impacts last in your absence. It is people do not buy goods and stories. They be like by relations, stories and magic. And this is my favorite one. If you build that foundation, both the moral and the ethical foundation as well as the business phase foundation and the experience foundation, then the building won't crumble. 
And that's why I think I'm so passionate about building business, building basics. I do not do not believe the flash and pan um, coaching model in which you get the coach a, when you write a post or you write a blog piece or you post a video and all of a sudden you have, you know, 800 customers. I'm going to be really honest. That does not work. You have to start from the beginning and build your business step by step. So building his business is like building a home. If the foundation rests on an unstable flat setting or is constructed with subpar materials, it doesn't matter if the home is perfect. It will never be a joy to its owner. And that is why I am so passionate about you figuring out what your values are because we need to have your values aligned so you are able to create a business that is sustainable for you, but also brings you joy. So who am I? So if you're just happening to watch this for the first time and haven't seen day one, this is who I am. I'm a graduate of Yale Divinity School. I'm a graduate of the Women's Leadership Program in from Hartford, Connecticut from Hartford Seminary. I'm an ordained minister in the Progressive UCC. I'm a clinically trained chaplain, a bereavement counselor, adult development and training expert. I have a diversity training certificate from Girl Scouts USA. I used to work for them as an adult development and training expert. I am the owner of Amory Zanzel Coaching. I'm starting to become a serial entrepreneur. I am also the owner of Purposeful Empowerment. And I also, side note, have been a general contract for three house renovations. So yes, I know how to do construction and I am a hospice chaplain. So this is a little bit of the pieces of my life. Um, the corner in the bottom right is from a retreat I did here in Nashville in February of 2019. Me learning, leaning against that red rocks is from a retreat I did in um, Utah in 2022. That picture of me hugging who that back is, is my beautiful daughter um, when I was ordained a minister in the United Church of Christ. And in the corner is me and my gorgeous wife, Tonda McKay. We're going to go back the other way. Unlike, and, and so what I have done, you know, I started building this business because I wanted to help others. But what I have done is I have unlocked time, location, and financial freedom. Forget about spending six years figuring it all out because it took me that long to figure it all out. I have a solution that worked for me and I'll teach you everything. No fluff, just honesty. Um, that picture on the left, me in the pools and another retreat I hosted in uh, New Mexico. And this is another picture of the Utah retreat. And so I want to tell you something about fluff clarity that I think that is really super important. Remember, there are more customers that exist that you can ever hope to serve in a lifetime. Let me remind you. There are more customers that exist than you can ever hope to serve in this lifetime. One of my old coaches used to say to me, there are 8 billion people in the world. So I want you to keep these numbers and this statement in mind, because as you're building your business, do not worry about clarity and niching down because there will always be people that you can serve and you can help. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the social media platforms out there. Um, this is important because I wanted to exemplify how many people are on the social media platforms. And honestly, I don't even know what Doyen and Telegram is. Your social media platform that you should choose to use should be based on your demographics of your ideal customer. So if you are a caregiving professional that's saying, I hate social media, you just have to pick one and be consistent. 
I typically use Facebook and Instagram. And recently, I have been using YouTube to build purposeful empowerment. So I hope you did your homework. I hope you clarified your values. And if you've written a mission statement, I would love to have that down in the comments. Clarifying your values is so integral to be able, that is the first step that we always do in purposeful empowerment so that you can really identify who you are as a person before you start building your business. So I'm getting to the next slide. So what are some of your values? As I said, I would love to hear them and you can write them in the chat. And also, if you'd like to share your mission statement for your business, put that in the chat as well. Surprise. I'm going to tell you something. You've already done this first step. As I said, defining your core values to create your mission statement for your company is key. And the next step in this program is to, uh, to find clarity about who you're going to serve. So let's talk a little bit about clarity. So what are the five business steps to clarity? So you first of all have to define your mission, statement, and values. I'd love to share with you my one like 30 second elevator pitch if somebody asks me what purposeful empowerment is. And purposeful empowerment is a business coaching program to support caregiving professionals as they create support and services for the communities they love. Simple, I think I might have botched it a little bit, but basically you get the gist, gist of it. Purposeful empowerment is for caregiving professionals to create support and services for the communities they love. So I that is my 30 second mission statement. So you need the next thing you need to do to determine clarity is to identify your target audience and their needs. You have to clarify your unique selling position, and you have to create a clear and concise business plan. And you have to continuously evaluate and address your strategies to align with your goals. And that's one of those things is um, you always think that you know, you're done, but honestly, with a business, you are never done because times change. So define your, defining your ideal customers involve identifying the characteristics or organizations that are most likely to benefit from your services. So I'm going to use the example of my business to help you understand. So what types of characteristics are we looking for? These include such factors as age, gender, location, income level, interests, values, and needs. By understanding your ideal customer, you can tell, tailor, oh, excuse me, tell, tailor, I can't speak today, your marketing and sales efforts to better reach and engage with them, ultimately, ultimately leading to increased success for your business. So here are some of the ideal, um, the, the characteristics of my ideal customers. So I'm gonna speak to, to my ideal customers for Lotus Group Coaching. First of all, there's somebody who has come out later in life. And I want you to know that later is life is self-defined. My youngest clients have been 25, while my old, oldest have been well over 70. But the average age of my clients are between 35 and 60, so a 25-year age span. They are struggling to find clarity about their sexual orientation and, and identity. Because most of them live in a super straight world, 
they are feeling super lonely and isolated and they want community. Often they are divorcing as well and leaving long-term marriages. They are super worried about their kids and they identify as non-binary, cis, and trans. Most of them, 80%, come from some sort of conservative religious tradition, um, whether they're um, Christian, Jewish, Islamic, and they have previous experience with therapy or coaching. And they also struggle with internalized homophobia. And my definition of internalized homophobia is that it's that, you know, often people who come out later in life are huge allies to the queer community. And my definition of homophobia is, you know, I don't care if anybody else is gay. The only person who can't be gay is me. So the next thing is I've identified my um, customers and now I am recognizing my own distinctive value. So I came out later at life at 50. I identify as cis. When my, I, my um, coming out journey in the beginning was incredibly lonely and isolated. I'm a minister. I'm a grief counselor. Um, I struggled with my own internalized homophobia. I'm a hospice chaplain. I'm a, a develop, develop, adult development trainer. And I also knew I could help. So I wanted to do something to the suffering I saw in the community. So who is my ideal client for Lotus Group Coaching? And this is from a retreat that I held in 2020 of the year of the pandemic in September. So my ideal client is me. You know, many times when we start working with communities and creating support and services, we often use our own experiences, especially if we are professional caregivers, to, to create those support and services. So we use our personal experiences to create that. So defining your ideal customer involves identifying the characteristics of the people, or organizations that are most likely to benefit from your services. And as you can see from, oh, let me go back a little bit. Um, um, oops, didn't mean to do that. Excuse me. I went out of my, uh, my presentation. Hold on one second. Um, let me close this out. I got something that came up unexpectedly. So I am going to move this icon out and, and we will move to the next page. So one of the things that you have to determine while you are building your business, while you are gaining clarity, is really consider the demographics of who you want to serve. And I'm going to say this again. It is important to regularly revisit and refine your business strategy to ensure you stay on track and continue to meet the needs of your customers. So I and my, and my colleague Barb Rollinson, as well as Anna Emphy, continually regularly revisit and refine the business strategy for both Lotus Group Coaching and Purposeful Empowerment. So now I'm going to extend it a little more. So who is my ideal client for Purposeful Empowerment? Yep, got to go back now. Excuse me, I'm just getting that. I get to the loom thing and there we go. 
There we go. So my ideal client for um, purposeful empowerment is I really do want to work with LGBTQIA plus folks or people who are a strong ally because there are several reasons. First of all, I believe our community needs strong business owners and strong entrepreneurs in it. I also believe that allies are super important to our community and that they are here to serve the queer community as well. And honestly, I don't particularly want to work with somebody who has a, a values that are opposed to mine, especially around human rights. So um, my ideal client, client is somebody who is LGBTQ or strong at ally. I really want to be very welcoming to anybody on the gender spectrum because of inclusivity, which is another value of mine. I am wanting a seeker or a starter as an entrepreneur, and I will explain that in the next slide. I would like somebody who has a professional background. Um, the reason why is that I really want to focus on the business building of your business. The programming and the, and the support and services are your area of expertise. And I might be able to give a little guidance on that, but really it is your area of expertise. And I trust that you know how to create the support and services for your clients. I would like to have someone who's overcome some personal obstacles because I believe that people who have gone through, through personal growth and transformation can use those personal experiences to help others. I am seeking people that are 40 plus. Now, of course, I'm gonna work with somebody 37 who comes to work with me, but really my ideal client is somebody who is 40 plus because they have 10, 15, 20, 30 years experience in that professional background. I want somebody who has a passion for a service or a product. One of my clients is very passionate about helping LGBTQIA plus parents. She was very passionate about serving people who, whose parents are really struggling with their kid being queer. They really want to serve the community they love. Um, they're not clear about their ideal customer. And the reason why is their skills can be translatable to so many different types of customers. So I, like me in the beginning, I called myself a transition coach. I know, what the heck does that mean? That would have taken a lot of marketing for me to be able to explain that to my ideal customer. So that is so normal. I start working with people that often call themselves transition or authenticity coaches. But really what I would love for people to do is to begin to narrow their, um, their ideal customer to go down to a niche. And remember, don't get nervous about niching because there are, what, 8 billion people in this world. <laughs> They're also unsure about branding, like business is new for them. They have always worked for other people or may have tried their own business. So they're really a little bit unsure about branding. They may not have a website or they have a website that's up there, but really is getting maybe, you know, a couple hundred hits a month or something like that because they have not SEO optimized their website so that they can be found organically. And also too, I really wanna work with people that don't value what they have to offer. So before I mentioned about the seeker and the starter, and I wanna show you some things. So I am in the promoter stage of business, my building my business. And I really want to work with people that are seekers and starters, literally people that are making from zero to a hundred thousand a year. They may just be starting out. They may be dabbling. They may be part time. And their primary question is, how do I stop pressure noise? Meaning, how do they remember the comfort zone a graphic I showed you yesterday? How do they stop the fears coming in on them so they can step out of the um, comfort zone? Um, 
they may be wondering like, what's wrong with me? Because if they are a starter, because they think that, you know, I keep doing everything and doing everything and nobody shows up. So they start to believe that there's something wrong with them. And really, oftentimes, it just takes a couple of tweaks in their marketing. They are seeking personal clarity about who they want to speak, who they want to serve. But they, the starter person is they are seeking clarity about their clients they are serving. So, for example, I started working with the later in life community um, and I started as grief work. But then as time went on, I realized that my clients needed so much more. Um, yes, the grief work, but we do a lot of work about internalized homophobia. We do a lot of work about, um, oh, what's the other one? About um, conditioning versus authenticity. We do a lot of parts healing. We do a lot of um, work around anxiety and depression. And a lot of my work actually is revolves around divorce support. Um, and so uh, the seeker will have they need what they need. They need daily, daily habits, routines, daily planning, setting outcomes. While the starter really is becoming very clear about who they're going to market to and who their avatar is. And um, you, uh, you to graduate, you have to be decided to be that you are confident enough to tell everyone. A lot of times people are really, really in the beginning phases are really anxious about letting people know that they're starting their own business. And um, I'm working with one of my clients right now, Kate, to have her begin to tell everyone that she is starting her own business. And while my other client, um, Jennifer, is working to create and monetize value. So you, this is a great resources, and I ask, I, I invite you to really take a look at it and see where you are on your business journey. So who is your ideal uh, graphics? What is your <laughs> story? Um, and so what is your personal story? So remember yesterday when I talked about my own personal story? Um, that was a way for me to begin to identify who I want to work with because my personal story influences my professional story. So I want you to spend some time thinking about what is your personal story. And then you have to start to think about what is your professional background. So in somewhere when you are creating your business, I would like for you to write down your personal background, everything you've been through, and your professional background. Because this is who you were, who you are and were, and this is who you are professionally. And then the next step is we're going to create something. We're going to get clarity from all of that information to begin to narrow down the net demographics of the people who, um, who you want to serve or what you and your your and what you in your business have to us, um, offer customers and clients. And then you have to share that information. So we are at the end of day two. At the end of today, I hope you have understood your core values, that you are beginning to understand the importance of a mission statement. And I want you to know that your mission statement will change over time, especially if you're in the beginning of your business building, um, I think my mission statement with Lotus Group Coaching probably in the five years that I have, six years that I have done it, has probably changed five times. You are beginning to understand the importance of clarity and clarity does not happen overnight. So if you start beginning with your core values, and then go to your mission statement, you will start to have clarity about who you want to serve. 
and understanding the emotions around clarity. It is super important that um, you realize that even though this is a business journey, this is often an emotional journey as well. As well. Many of us struggle with something that is called imposter syndrome. We, we are like, who are you to be able to do this? And I would like to share something personally from my background. So I became a minister uh, 20 years ago. And I remember talking to the person who was my mentor at the time. And I said, who am I to do to go into ministry? Why me? And he replied to me, why not you? So that's what I have to say to you today. If you're saying, who am I to start a known business? Who am I to serve this population? Who am I to create community? Well, why not you? So what do you bring to your business personally and professionally? And then we need to get to understand who your I deal customer is. So when it comes to reaching your target audience, understanding their demographics is crucial. Age can influence communication preferences. So for example, social media, depending on how old somebody is, will determine their social media communication prefer preferences. Um, Facebook is good with people over 50. Um, Instagram is thir people 30 to 45. Um, TikTok is for people younger and YouTube really goes across the board. But I do notice that people who are younger turn to YouTube for information all the time. Um, gender identity can impact product preferences. Location can affect the way people interact with brands and their purchasing habits. Income level can influence affordability and perceived value. And interests can help you understand what your audience, while values can shape their beliefs and their decision making. So it is super important to understand the needs of your audience and to be able to create what is pain points around their needs. So thinking about my later in life people, um, some of their pain points is um, isolation, shame, guilt, um, misunderstanding of divorce, um, finding community, um, understanding their orientation. So they have all kinds of pain points that I address and provide solutions. So by taking these factors into account, you can create a more effective and targeted marketing strategy connects with your audience on a deeper level. So we do have some homework tonight and they are clarity worksheets that help you gain some clarity about who your ideal customer is with demographics, understanding their pain points, and also understanding how you will serve them. The homework regarding values and the homework regarding clarity is in our Facebook group and it is under the guide section. So please take a look for that there. So it is in the Facebook group, as I said, and that is what I have today regarding clarity. So I want to thank you for joining me for this presentation. I am super grateful for all of you. And I hope we get to see each other soon. Please look for the email that I'll be sending after this um, broadcast. And hopefully I will be able to get to meet you and hear about your business. So thank you so much for your time today and let us know if you have any questions.